Chemistry 20. This is our second lesson in the acid base unit. This is the strong, the weak, and the polyprotic. In this lesson, we will explore strong and weak acids, strong and weak bases, polyprotic acids and bases, and we'll work through five examples. Strong acids. Remember, there are six strong acids that we must remember. They are hydrochloric acid, hydroidic acid, sulfuric acid, hydrobromic acid, nitric acid, and perchloric acid. Strong and weak acids. Strong acids ionize 100% and react with water. In our example, we have hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid. It will react with water. It transfers its hydrogen to water, forming H3O plus and its anion Cl minus. This reaction theoretically proceeds to 100%. So we will say the products are greater than 99%. Weak acids do not ionize completely and typically react less than 5%, but some can react more. So as a generalization, we will say that weak acids ionize less than 50%, and they still react with water. In our example, we have acetic acid, which will react with water. It will transfer its hydrogen to water, resulting in H3O plus, and the acetate ion. This reaction proceeds less than 50%. So as a result, we will write products are less than 50%. Strong and weak bases. Strong bases are ionic compounds containing OH minus, and they dissociate 100% in water. Remember, strong bases do not react with water. They just dissociate. In our example, we have sodium hydroxide, which will dissociate when placed into water, forming its ions Na plus and OH minus. This reaction goes to completion. As a result, we will say the products are greater than 99%. Weak bases partially react less than 50% with water to form OH- in solution. In our example, we can see NH3, which is a weak base. It will react with water. It gains a hydrogen from water, forming NH4+. And as a result, what used to be water is now OH minus. This reaction does not proceed to completion. So as a result, we will say the products are less than 50%. Weak bases can be a molecule or an ion. Most weak bases are an anion meaning they have a negative charge. That negative charge represents that they can gain a positive charge. They can gain a hydrogen. In all of our examples, we have a negative charge on each one of the molecules. Example number one. Which of the following acids would have the highest conductivity? Pause the video and attempt this example. To find the highest conductivity, we need a species that will ionize 100% in water. So we should be looking for 
the strongest acid. A, B, and C are all weak acids, so they will only ionize less than 50%. Therefore, D, the strong acid, will ionize 100% in water. It will produce the most ions, which will have the highest conductivity. Polyprotic acids. Monoprotic acids have one acidic hydrogen atom and can only react once with water. For example, HCl. There is only one hydrogen in the chemical formula, therefore it can only react once. Polyprotic acids have more than one acidic hydrogen and can react more than once with water. For example, we have H3PO4. There are three hydrogens in the chemical formula. Therefore, this acid has the potential to react up to three times. H3PO4 is also a weak acid. So it will react with water, forming the products H3O plus and H2PO4 minus. Since it's a weak acid, this reaction will occur less than 50%. H2PO4 minus still has two hydrogens, which it can transfer to water. So as a result, our next reaction that can occur, we are taking H2PO4 minus and reacting it with water again to form the products H3O plus and HPO4 two minus. This reaction will occur less than 1%. Our acid still has one more hydrogen remaining, which can react with water. As a result, we will have our final reaction with HPO4 two minus plus water, forming H3O plus and PO4 three minus. There are no more hydrogens remaining. As a result, we cannot have any more reactions. This reaction will barely occur at all, and we're going to say it's almost equal to zero. It's important to note that the percent ionization will decrease with every reaction. We started with a weak acid, so our products will be less than 50%. In our next reaction, our products will be less than 1%. And our final reaction, our products will almost be equal to zero. Polyprotic bases. Monoprotic bases react once with water to produce OH minus. In our example, we can see NH3. Polyprotic bases are generally weak bases that can react with water more than once to produce OH minus. In our example, we're seeing CO3 2 minus. 2 minus represents that it can gain up to two hydrogens. So therefore, this will be a polyprotic base. CO3 2 minus is a weak base. So it will react with water and it will gain a hydrogen from water, forming the products OH minus and HCO3 minus. This reaction will occur less than 50%. HCO3- can still gain another hydrogen. So as a result, it will react with water again, forming OH- and H2CO3. Once it has two hydrogens in its chemical formula, there's no more minus charge. That means that it cannot gain another hydrogen. This reaction will occur less than 1%. Again, it's important to note that the percent reaction decreases with every reaction. Since it was a weak base, it will react less than 50%. And in the second reaction, the products will be less than 1%. Example number one. Predict the modified Arrhenius reaction when HI is placed in water. 
what is the percent completion of the reactions. Pause the video and attempt this example. Hydroidic acid is a strong acid. Therefore, it will react 100% in water, meaning the products will be greater than 99%. There is also only one hydrogen in the chemical formula. Therefore, it will be a monoprotic acid and can only react once. Remember, acids transfer a hydrogen to water, forming the products H3O plus and the anion I minus. Example number two, predict the modified Arrhenius reaction in a sulfurous acid solution. What is the percent completion of the reactions? Pause the video and attempt this example. Sulfurous acid is a weak acid. Acids react with water. They transfer hydrogen to water, forming the products H3O plus and HSO3 minus. Since this is a weak acid, the products will be less than 50%. But sulfurous acid has two hydrogens in its chemical formula, therefore it will be polyprotic. In our next reaction, we will take HSO3- and react it with water again to form the products H3O plus and SO3-2-. At this point in time, there's no more hydrogens remaining, so we cannot have another reaction. This reaction will occur less than 1%. Example number three. Predict the modified Arrhenius reaction when KOH is placed in a 500 milliliter beaker of water. What is the percent completion of the reactions? Pause the video and attempt this example. KOH is a strong base. It is an ionic compound with OH already in the chemical formula. Strong bases do not react with water. They just dissociate into their ions, K plus and OH minus. This reaction will proceed to completion. Therefore, the products will be greater than 99%. Example number four, predict the modified Arrhenius reaction in a weak base solution of HSO3 minus. What is the percent completion of the reactions? Pause the video and attempt this example. As stated, HSO3 minus is a weak base. It's important to note that this substance could act as an acid or a base. This is because it does have a hydrogen, but it also has a negative charge. But since the question tells us that it's a weak base, we will make that assumption. Weak bases react with water. They take a hydrogen from water, and in this case, will form the products OH- and H2SO3. Since this was a weak base, the reaction will not proceed to completion and the products will be less than 50%. Since our original base only had a minus one charge, that means it can only gain one hydrogen. As a result, this is the only chemical reaction that will occur. Moving forward, we will explore the concepts of pH and pOH.